Some of my more dedicated followers may know that outside of making awful videos on the internet, my primary career is in computer science. And in the days before I destroyed my mind and body with drugs and alcohol, I was somewhat clever. In this video, I'd like to show you one of my more clever inventions, an artificial intelligence that studies music and learns to create its own. I call it AI Medeus. To create AI Medeus, I use a form of artificial intelligence called neural networks. Neural networks are really cool in that they try to very simply imitate the behavior of the human brain, so maybe someday we'll have robots that like Green Day. A neural network is comprised of nodes, which are like neurons in the brain. There are three layers of nodes, the input layer, the output layer, and the hidden layer. The idea is that the pathways between the layers map the relationship between the input and the output. You can think of the whole thing as a giant mathematical function. Take fx equals x plus 2, for example. x is passed through the input layer. The hidden layer holds the operations that need to be applied to the input, which yields the output. Now, we want our neural network to learn what this function is, or rather, what the relationship between the input and the output is. We want to be able to give our neural network an input, and it will just tell us the answer. You might ask, why not just write a few simple lines of code with the function, and then you always get the right answer? Well, what if it's a very complex problem, like music? Is there a mathematical function for art? Of course not. We're not so much interested in the answer, but the relationship between the input and the output. So initially, our network has no idea what the relationship is. The function is all just random. To teach our network, we supply a data set of example inputs and outputs. Using the previous function, if the input is 2, the output is 4. When we first give the network an input, it will essentially make a dreadful attempt of a guess of what the output might be, because it doesn't understand the problem yet. If we give it 2, it might say the output is 766.28. Bad computer. To punish the network for its stupidity, we force it to go over a bunch of example inputs and outputs. Every time the network makes a guess, we give it the actual answer, and the network will go back and readjust the mappings between the input and the output. This takes a long time and you need a lot of examples to make sure your neural network is learning the correct correlation. If you only give our network 2 and 4 as an example, it might think the function was fx equals x to the power of 2 and then it would have the wrong answer for anything else we try to ask it. After a long time training, some paths in the network will take precedence over others, just like how when your brain has an electrical impulse telling it you're hungry, the path to order pizza is much more well-traveled and a more natural instinct than the decision to make yourself a meal, you lazy slob. Now I don't know anything about biology or the human brain, so maybe it's actually not like that at all, never mind. So now the network has been trained on all this example data, we can give it an input it's never seen before, and hopefully it'll be able to tell us the right answer. But this mathematical function is easy. How do we teach a neural network music? And this is the really hard part of neural networks, how to present the problem to your neural network. Go on, think about it. If you want to teach a neural network how to make music, how are you going to represent the examples you give it? What's the input? What's the output? Go on, think. I know. The input will be the name of the song, and the output will be the song. No, you stupid idiot. I first found a large collection of MIDI files of classical music. A MIDI file isn't an audio file, it holds information about the music like the instruments used and the notes played. It's like a digital version of sheet music, which is much easier for a neural network to understand than audio waves. A MIDI file can still be played by a program that interprets the information. Some of you may have noticed I played a MIDI version of Take This Bottle by Faith No More at the end of my Tales from the Bottle videos. I wrote a program that would read the MIDI files and extract the information I wanted into a CSV file of numbers that represented the piano parts of the classical music. Why did I choose a dataset of classical music to train on? It was the first thing I found. Thankfully, with a neural network, you are not limited to just one input. I chose to use 6. The first two represent a note and the note that comes after it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I just represented the notes with numbers. The next two input nodes are the octaves of the two notes, whereabouts they're played on the keyboard. The last two input nodes were the duration of the two notes. The output layer also consisted of the same six nodes, only these represented the two notes that followed the first. 
So my input was two notes and my output was the next two notes. The hidden layer is a bit more tricky. Like the other layers, the hidden layer can have as many nodes as you want. Unlike the other layers, you can have multiple hidden layers. This is called deep learning. The basic idea is the more complex the problem, the more nodes in your hidden layer you should have. The reality is this is not an exact science. Who knows how many you should have? There are some general rules of thumb, but to get it right, you're just going to have to go through trial and error. I spent weeks, if not months, training my neural network, graphing the error rate, changing the node layout, starting again and comparing the results. I eventually opted for five hidden layers of 20 nodes each. At this point, you may be saying to yourself, well, that's all very good, but what's the point if it can only output two notes for a song with a total of four notes? That's not a very good song, nor a very impressive technological feat, considering the network already has 50% of the song. While I didn't use just any neural network, I used a recurrent neural network, which not only has paths connecting each layer to the layer ahead of it, but also paths that loop back on themselves. This means once the network has produced its first output, I can create a loop where it feeds the output back into itself as the next input. The recurrent connections in the network mean it will have a type of memory of the inputs that came before. Also, I lied about having six inputs. I actually had 10. Each note is accompanied by a number that represents its numerical position in the song, as well as a number that represents the total number of notes in the song. Of course, this field is going to be the same for all notes of the song. The reason I pass these inputs is to try and help the network consider a note's positioning in the song. So maybe as it trains on the dataset, it picks up certain musical conventions like the first third of the notes in the song are soft and slow before picking up pace. Maybe the last note in a song is often drawn out. I'm basically just trying to get my neural network to pick up as many patterns and relationships in the dataset of music as it can. Obviously the dataset consists of many different songs, but maybe my neural network can discover the exact musical formula present across all of them and use it to create the perfect music. Obviously it can't actually do this. The perfect song was already gifted to us by God in the year 2000. So I trained AI Medeus until it had learned all it could. Then I randomized two notes and a song length to pass as an input and I let my beautiful creation experience the pride that I felt for it by having it produce children of its own. I hope God grants you the forgiveness your father cannot. All jokes aside, the music isn't actually all that bad for a computer. There's clear, simple melodies repeated throughout the song, giving it a consistent theme, while also varying them a little throughout to keep it interesting. I decided I would try training AI Medeus on some pop music. Everybody says pop music is trite and formulaic, so maybe the neural network will have an easier time picking up on patterns and tropes. Let's give it a try.
Well, surprisingly, the music is actually much, much worse. Uh, this is horrific, to be honest. I guess even though pop music generally follows a verse chorus verse structure and classical music tends to meander throughout the song, the classical music must just more strictly adhere to conventional music theory and was easier for AI Medeas to learn, while the pop music was too varied. Very interesting, and what's more interesting was that training AI Medeas on pop music wasn't all bad. I noticed that in every pop song it produced, the song changed drastically around three quarters of the way in before going back to normal. There is a definite structure at this point in the songs. I think it's trying to emulate a solo or a bridge. So there you have it, my music making neural network. Not the greatest landmark in the field of computer science, but it's certainly fun to think about. What if I had uh, represented this music in a different way? What if I knew more about musical theory? Maybe I could have used scales and keys as inputs and maybe that would have given me better results. I wrote a crude formula to evaluate the network's songs, giving them a score based on repetition and variety. But what if the network used the score to try and write better songs? What if I created another neural network that judged songs and tried to guess if they were made by humans or by AI? And then the two networks would compete, AI Medeus trying to trick the other network into thinking its songs were human made and the other network trying to pick them out. This is called a generative adversarial network by the way. I could even call the AI that critiqued the music Say I'm in Cowell and I think it's sent to end the video.